Hey. Hey, I'm Marzen. Adam. I'm nice Jerry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm Josh. I'm Tiffany. Allison. Kendall. I'm Brandon. I'm Queenie. Hayden. My name is Jane. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm supposed to ask you, what is one of the most hurtful thing that someone has ever said to you and stuck with you? Nobody nice. likes you. It's like the most elementary mean phrase ever, and that's actually where I heard it was in elementary school. One thing that a lot of kids called me was um, ugly. It, it really affected me. And he like shouted it in front of the whole grade. He definitely had a crush on you. <laughs> I, that like literally never occurred to me, but it did like ruin my self-esteem. Wow. <laughs> this happened in sixth grade. My teacher came into the room and said, Josh is the perfect example of the kind of student you don't want to be. You are very articulate. The first time I heard it was in third grade from my teacher and like me and my mom, we heard it was like, we were so excited about it. But I didn't realize what it really truly meant until I started growing up. At that point, I was the only student of Latin American descent in the classroom. My friends sometimes they say like you sound very white. Am I articulate or just like I sound proper enough for a black person? I had already felt like I was dumb because of my heritage, the color of my skin, where I came from. And then that almost confirmed it for me, that I was stupid. Do I not sound black enough? You know, I try to like, add in different slang and stuff like that, change like the pitch in my voice, but like I can't change myself and it kind of hurt. This definitely made me think constantly about what people perceive about me. When I was growing up, uh -huh. uh, people called me ugly too. Oh. <laughs> One thing that they made fun of was my nose. For my 18th birthday, I went into reconstructive surgery and I actually did surgery on my nose. Really? So it really affected me. It but really did? Yeah, it did. I just went to school one day and all my friends weren't talking to me. I asked one of my friends why and she said, I just woke up the other day and decided I thought that you were really annoying and that I didn't want to be friends anymore. I was 11. I went with these two girls that were in my grade to Six Flags and they were talking about a sleepover they were going to have that night. They said, sorry, there's just not enough space for you. And I had been to one of their houses before and I knew there was enough space for me. It made me realize that people can be really terrible to you for absolutely no reason. It's something so trivial, but at the time to me it was such a big deal. Stop saying you're a transgender man when you dress like a girl. I like to dress in skirts and dresses and frilly fluffy clothes. I still identify as a transgender man when I dress that way. And a lot of people, especially on the internet, take a lot of offense to that. This was that, that ex. She said, your dream is a waste. That's, yeah. As a daughter, I, I feel like I have done more things to just frustrate my mom. That was some tough love that I actually, in hindsight, needed to hear. Wow. Because I was pursuing film without thinking about the why, really. I think a lot about how much I failed as a daughter, a friend, and a sister. Can you hold your hand? Oh my <laughs> sure. I'm so sorry. It was about 24 when it happened. It all started in elementary school. Uh, we had a new kid come in. He was taking my friends, or so I thought. But I was just mean as hell to him. It happened when I was in college. Someone just asked me, you're in STEM? You don't look like you're in STEM. Cut to 15 years later, I was at a party. There was a stranger sitting at the table, and he asked me, are you Jared? And I'm like, yeah, and he's like, do you know so-and-so? My heart sank, because I haven't seen him since then. And no one would bring him up unless it was about that. And he's like, you're so-and-so's bully, weren't you, in elementary school? Do I kind of look dumb to you? Why can't I be in science? Like, I was questioning myself. And he's like, that's so-and-so's bully. You're the bully. And they all like cheered and were like, I can't believe like you're the bully. So my biggest fear was it stuck with him. And it stuck with me. My heart is beating because I so feel for you. The words that we say to other people, how we take those words in too, and how we can remember those things for so many years that, that we say too, and that when you hear two sides of a story and you see where other people are coming from, it like humanizes the situation. You were saying like it didn't occur to you to like question it, and I'm realizing I didn't question it either. Like 
I, I never was like, maybe he just has a crush on me, or maybe some of these people do like me. Like, I just accepted it like you did as a fact. Like, yeah. okay, I am unlikable. Moving forward, I will be more likable, you know? Like, it's, it's really weird how our brains do that sometimes. Yeah, we just like, because we, we think each other are wrong all the time. Like, that kid who said that to you is probably as bad at math and like wrong <laughs> all day long. But then when you hear something really, really negative about yourself, you're like, what, I think the, the fear of what if that's true just becomes that's true. To come and meet somebody and share something that is so vulnerable to you and something that at the time felt like the end of the world and to share that with, with each other was just a unique experience. Your words matter and just because you say it and then it's over doesn't mean it's over. I think there's a really optimistic side to it which is that like you can say something to someone that'll they'll hold on to for a long time with a lot of pride and uh, can shape them in a really positive way.